Hello, online world. I am tuning in from Dharmashala, India, and um, I'm heading into silence tomorrow for 10 days in uh, Tushita. This is an ashram that has, is near and dear to my heart, and, um, and it is a Buddhist, um, a Buddhist space, so there are teachings within the silence, and this one specifically is on the spiritual care for the dying. And, you know, I'm reading that not as just physical, but metaphysical, as I feel I have gone through so many death cycles in the last years. Uh, as I kind of peel back the layers and the onion of the traumatized body, like living in the traumatized body and what that means. And, and knowing that my trauma is no bigger than anyone else's, but that it is deeply affecting me. And although my brain in so many ways has figured out, quote unquote, um, the stories and how to come out of the loops and how to find resolution and to see the silver lining, the body hasn't caught up. You know, the implicit memory of the body is still very much feeling. And I feel like I'm in this duality of my mind and my body not completely being allies. It's not that they're not allies, but it's the mind is kind of like, hey, like, get over it, you know, let's move on. And the body being like, but I'm in pain. And India tests everyone. India tests me. You know, I, I can't speak for everyone actually, but it tests me. And I didn't know where exactly I was supposed to go after I left Japan. And I thought about it and I felt into it. And I asked my body, like, where do you want to be? I asked my mind, where do you want to be? And they had some opposing, you know, conversations part of me, the mind was like, let's go to Bali, let's go surfing. And the body was like, I need rest, I need slowness, I need stillness. Let's go to India and sit at Tushita. And the mind is like, let's go hang out with our friends and do fun stuff. And I chose the unshiny path. I show, I'm choosing to put myself in containment in a way to imprison myself. Um, something that young Carl Jung says, and uh, he speaks about prisoners being lucky in a way to be caught because when we are caught for our evil deeds and our sins, we begin the alchemical process of containment where the roles are switched and the perpetrator becomes the victim and begins to see how his deeds affect others and is given this opportunity for reinstatement in a healthier and more wholesome way. And I feel like I've consistently in the past few years imprisoned myself in this way of like creating opportunities for the alchemical process to completely obliterate me and bring me back. And I have been in so much pain lately. I am struggling. I am. It hasn't been easy. I'm not crying today. Maybe I will. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not crying in this video. This could be, you know, me just falling to pieces online on the internet. And it's, I share everything else here. So I thought, why not share this process? But I've been struggling. I've been in pain. I have been in my pain. I have been in my sensitivity. And what I want to call it now is my responsiveness to my environment. And I've been deeply affected by the world around me in a way that I haven't been before. These last three months have been some of the hardest months in the past three years. You know, I went through a huge alchemical process after a heartbreak three years ago that almost destroyed me. You know, it did destroy me in many aspects. It destroyed the aspects of me that were feeble-minded, that needed integration, and it was one of the greatest gifts. And that process occurred again in this last three months as I went to even a deeper layer of my wounding and have been shown aspects of myself that need to be obliterated and that need to integrate. And I have isolated. I've spent so much time alone. I have become a hermit and so comfortable with myself, which is beautiful, but there is a part of me that still desires like deep connection and love, like to be in relationship to other. And 
that's been challenging the past months and it's been coming in such beautiful ways, like such poetic devotional um, waves of, of people offering just with big heart their their hearts and their their love and and I realize how loved I am and how desired and how a part of the world I am and yet the story in that I'm unlovable and that I'm somehow broken it still persists it's still there it's beneath the surface and today I feel more centered and grounded but yesterday was so hard I cried I cried so much and I sat, I've been sitting in so much stillness and so much silence and I've been listening. And I've been hearing my body's like cry for help. And I'm tuning in to what it means to like really live in a traumatized body. You know, I think my mind has thought me out of trauma for the past years. I help others, I coach others through it. I'm leading courses and the only way I truly feel that that can be successful is by putting myself into these alchemical processes and letting myself be obliterated because the people that I help are being courageous and in some ways not even out of their own choice but falling forward and being humbled and of course I have to as well, you know. And I'm being humbled right now. I'm being humbled at how much I hold, how much pain, how much anger, how much perfectionism I hold. And I saw a Ayurvedic doctor uh, yesterday and immediately, like she, it was like she knew me. She just saw me and she pulled my tongue out of my mouth and my tongue apparently was shaking and cracked and she said, you have bad childhood, <laughs> lots of pain, you have lots of pain. I said, yes, yeah. she said, your nose is broken, your jaw is broken, why? And I said, well, you know, my mother did that. And she said, and she goes to jail for this? And I said, no, I didn't tell anybody. And she said, hmm. And she said, you are full of anger, you are full of pain. This causes disease. This is where cancer comes from. And because I have gone through a cancer scare that ended up in three surgeries and I'm now due for another yearly checkup. And I'm not so fearful like I was before. I'm not catastrophizing. I'm not dramatizing. I'm not going into the mind and saying, oh God, poor me. I'm, I'm really like, I will face this. and. I will heal. But there was a moment when this woman saw me that I just felt sorry for myself. I just felt here I am again, alone somewhere, you know, in a foreign land. I've crossed like so many oceans, so many lands to, to heal myself and to be a better version. And still it's the same stuff that's affecting me. And I know that so many of us feel that it's like the same shit, the same story but there are deeper layers to it, deeper complexities. And so I go into silence tomorrow, just feeling weak, feeling fucking exhausted. I'm so tired. I sleep so much. I walk so slow. I am so irritable. I like the whole world is annoying me. Everyone is annoying me. The most loving people annoy me. Um, the most unmindful people, the most mindful people, like I'm just irritated. It's like my skin has been peeled off and this layer that is exposed is so sensitive to the sun, it's sensitive to water, it's sensitive to sound, light, texture, everything. And all of the body that has been dissociated and numb my whole life, a new layer is coming online of sensitivity and responsiveness to my environment that I'm not used to yet and it can feel overwhelming at times and it can feel like I just want to be alone and I know that that's not true I know 
that I want to be in connection, but that I also really need so much time alone. And so I'm sharing this to say like I was struggling, I was struggling. And it's not pretty, it's, it's messy and it's uncomfortable and I spent a lot of time sitting in the dark, which happens in India <laughs> because the power is out all the time. And since I've gotten here, all I wanted to was to be comfortable in some sense while I'm discomfort, like while I'm uncomfortable. And um, and immediately, like three days of no power, no heat, and I'm cold and it's dark and I'm alone in my room and I am just sitting with the feelings of like what's coming up inside and it's beautiful and I I too choose this I choose this medicine of great discomfort of messiness and I told a friend like you know I feel like a pig wallowing in mud I feel flat and unshiny and uncomfortable and exhausted and and I fucking embrace it yeah I embrace it so there's no goal here. It's just a sharing of I'm fucking struggling. And I don't need anything but from anyone in sense except for just like love and it doesn't even need to be spoken to me, you know, just like feeling your energy, like giving me some love shocks. And um yeah, if you relate, I think so many of us are going through this right now. If you relate, I feel you, I feel you. And I'm so fucking highly sensitive right now, more than I have ever been. And I too love that about me. This new echo that I'm becoming, I embrace her and I hold her. And may the silence fucking obliterate me. May it tear me open in the kindest and most loving way. And may... I release deeper and deeper these stories, like these limiting beliefs, these unconscious contracts that are bound to a lineage of perversion and pain and sadness. And may I love, like, may I love. And, and something else that I read the other day that Jung said, you know, is like to really release ourselves um, from the pain of our stories of like perpetratorship we have to see ourselves in our monsters and our enemies and our perpetrators and not just say, oh, we're all one and I see you and I, I am you, but really say, I see myself in you. I see the perpetrator in me. I see the monster in me. And I feel that that's what I'm seeing now. Like all of the stories in my past where I was the victim and someone was the perpetrator, I'm being given so much compassion as I am irritable and angry and messy and dirty and rah. I'm just like, oh, I'm you. I'm fucking messy and angry and just I'm mm, all the things. And it's uncomfortable and it's also glorious. And um, yeah. May the silence, uh, may the silence be seen as a gift in all the moments that I become unfastened. And uh, I hope for all of you that you can also put yourself in alchemical processes and containers that are super uncomfortable because when it rains, it pours, but when the sun comes out again, it's glorious. And I know that. I know that I'm in a moment of death as I go into a retreat on death. And I know that I will be reborn again. And this too is temporary. And I'm not waiting for it to be over. But damn, like, I'm ready to come up for air. Yeah. Mm. So, that's that. <laughs>